Hello, my spectacular speakers. This is Deborah Northcutt, your speaker support concierge. I have to apologize for going live a little late. I was having issues and I'm hoping and praying that my computer doesn't shut me down, which it did before. But welcome to the Sensational Speakers Lounge Show. Today, I'm going to be talking about three tips about podcast shows you can't afford to miss. Now, let me ask you a couple of questions. How many of you have thought about starting a podcast show? And how many of you know what you need to start a podcast show? Well, I did a live in my Facebook group yesterday, letting them know that I was going to be talking about this subject today. And I had someone ask me, is it hard to start a podcast show or to get a podcast show going? Well, right now, there are 2.4 million podcast shows. So I would say, no, it's not hard to get a podcast show started, but you need to know how to do it right. And it does take a lot of effort to put a podcast show together. So I'm not going to say that it's easy. Just like anything in life, it takes time and it takes effort. Now, let me know where you're watching from. Be sure to comment below with, and ask me any questions that you have about this live. And thank you so much for joining me today. Now, if you're watching the replay of this live, feel free to leave your comments and questions below, and I'll make sure that I circle back and answer any questions. Now, I see I have one person watching me. I don't know who you are because I can't see. Let me go to comments. I can't see your name, but thank you for watching. Um, and feel free to share this live with your friends and your fans. And if you want me to see your name and your comments, please go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook and give Facebook permission for me to see your comments. Now, I have a free checklist of 24 money-making activities that I can do for you. Make sure you download your free gift. The link is in the live description. I have an announcement to make, guys. Make sure you tune into my show next Thursday, November 17th, same time, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time for my guest speaker. Her name is Lisa Reed, and Lisa will be talking about how to grow your business through speaking. I get asked that question a lot. So Lisa is an expert on that subject, and she's also a speaker who can talk on this, who can speak on this topic. So make sure that you don't miss this. Show up next week, November 17th at 1 p.m., Central Standard Time to hear Lisa speak about how to grow your business through speaking. Now, let's discuss what I'm going to be talking about today. I have three topics that I'm going to talk about. Number one is you should know your what and your why you want to start a podcast show from the beginning. The second topic I'm going to talk about is you don't need to spend a fortune on equipment, but you do need a quality setup. And the third thing is why you need a marketing plan. Now, as a beginner or an aspiring podcaster, you're probably like many of us. Before starting a podcast, you might think podcasting looks easy right? But like I said, it takes a lot of effort and people don't see what you go through to get things set up. They just see the end result. Now, podcasting, like any serious endeavor that you go in, takes a lot of more, a lot more work, like I said, than it looks like from the outside. So let's start with the first thing that I said I was going to talk about. Know your why and your, your what from the beginning. Now, it's important to be able 
to add, to ask questions about your podcast before you get started. You need to know what is your podcast going to be about. And probably the most important thing is why are you doing it? Now, beginning a podcast without a defined plan is like starting a journey without a map. Or getting on a boat without and sailing out into sea without a destination. You're going to get there, but it's going to take you a lot more effort and a lot more time to get there if you didn't have a if you, you know if you had a plan in the first place, it wouldn't take you as long, bottom line. Now, many beginning podcasters make the mistake of not having a good idea of a niche, a style and your audience before you even get started. Now, some people, you know, they stumble across success. Let's let's be honest. Some people do get lucky and they do become successful, but it's much easier to start out with a plan. First of all, you want to do some soul searching. Why do you want to start this podcast? Do you like to talk a lot and you just want to get out there and start a podcast? Um, Do you have something that you want to teach the world and you just are burning to get out there and and teach whatever it is you want to teach to the world? Do you dream of being paid to interview guests that you admire? Or also, do you want to get out there and interview influencers? Write down your goals and your big why. Write down your goals on a sticky note and stick that sticky note, I would say, in two places, on your bathroom mirror. So when you get up every single morning and go to brush your teeth, you're reading your why as to why you want to start your podcast and stick your sticky note on your computer. So when you come out and start your computer for the day, you're reading your why. You got that note looking at you right in the face, staring at you in the face as to why you want to start your podcast. Now, the second thing is you don't need to spend a fortune on equipment, but you do need to have a quality setup. Now, for beginning podcasters, it's easy to assume that you need a fancy studio and, you know, a bunch of startup costs in order to produce high quality content that competes with big podcasters. Well, number one, you're not competing with big podcasters, so you don't have to worry about going out spending a whole bunch of money. And as far as having a fancy studio, I know some podcasters who podcast from their closet. I mean, their closet, you know, if your closet is big enough, you know, to set yourself up in, I would do that. And the reason why a closet is a great place to podcast from is because all of your clothes, all of your shoes, everything that you have in your closet serves as a buffer. And It's nice and quiet and peaceful, and it's great, you know, to to podcast from your closet. But if you do have an office, I would suggest that you make sure that you have a door on your office so you can go in and shut the door. If you have dogs or cats or any type of animals, and especially if your dogs bark a lot, you definitely want to be able to shut the door to drown out all that noise. And if you have small children, (laughs) you definitely don't want your children running in and out of your office while you're committing, while you're, you know, conducting your podcast show. You definitely want to keep them busy. So put out a lot of toys or something to hold their attention so you can conduct your podcast show. Now I have some equipment here that I'm going to show you. I could actually start my own podcast show if I wanted to myself. These are the things that you need to start your podcast show. So I'm going to show you. First thing that you can start out with is, and I'm going to show you here, is a web camera. I have this web camera. I've been having this camera for mm, maybe five years. And um, I don't use it that often, but I have used it in the past. So I know for a fact this web camera here shows a wonderful, clear picture. I'm using the camera on my laptop right now, and this camera here shows a much clearer, deeper picture than my laptop camera. And this is what you need if you plan on having guests and if you plan on using Zoom, you know, if you plan on having video for your podcast show. 
everyone doesn't use video. A lot of people just have a um, audio podcast, which is fine too. But if you plan on using video, I would say buy this camera here and the brand name is Speedal, S-P-E-D-A-L. And I didn't spend a lot of money for this web uh, camera. I can't tell you how much I spent, but I know it was under $100. So this is this camera here, it folds apart like this. Let me see if you can see. It comes apart. And this part here is what hooks over the front of your laptop. And this bottom part here, you close it to keep this together so it doesn't fall over like this while it's hooked onto your laptop. It also has a super long cord. I would say this cord is about 10 feet long. And at the bottom, it has this USB plug that you plug into a USB outlet in your computer. And there's this little red light that comes on to let you know that the camera's on. So this is a great web camera to use. Logitech is another great um, brand if you want to buy a USB camera. Second thing I would suggest is investing in a pair of these headsets that go over your ears. Now, I love these type of headsets because I have tiny ears, guys. I have small ears. I don't know if you can see it, but when I put um, any type of headphones that stick in your ears, in your ears, they fall out on me all the time. So I love these type of headsets that go over, over your ears. Now, this brand here is called Treble Box, I do believe. And everything that I'm showing you you can get it on Amazon. This is where I bought these. And I paid like $80 for these headsets. They also have a button on the side that cancels out noise. So like I'm saying, these are great headsets right here to use for podcasting. And as you can see how thick this rubber is or this foam goes over your ears. So they are very nice and cushioned. So, you know, let me do this. I meant to take down this banner. So let me take my banner down just so you can see things a little bit better. Now, the next thing I want to show you is my Blue Yeti microphone. I love this Blue Yeti microphone here. My husband bought this microphone for me for Christmas two years ago. As a matter of fact, I'm using this microphone right now to do my live. And I just love it. Like I said, it has a button on the front. It's a mute button. And when it's pushed in, it flashes red to let you know that you're on mute. So don't make the mistake like I did once and go live and you've done your whole live. And when you go to look back at it, your lips are moving, but no, nothing's coming out because you're muted. So make sure that you're not on mute before you use your microphone here. Now I have this microphone on a adjustable arm that you can slide back and forth like this. You can't see the arm, but it's on an arm. You can take this microphone. You can leave it down like this. This is the way I like to have my microphone when I'm talking on live. Or you can turn it up straight up like this. If you like your microphone up, I'm trying to show this the best I can. But the best part of this arm I love so much is, like I said, when I'm done with it, I can just slide it out of the way like that, you know, and push it aside and I'm done. It also comes with a hook that you screw onto your desk, which is convenient. I, I love it. I love it. Now, what comes with this microphone? I'm going to show you the stand that actually comes with the microphone. This is the stand that comes with this Blue Yeti microphone. You can put the Blue Yeti in here. There's like two little holes that you screw the microphone into. And you can, you can see the bottom of the stand. It has, uh, what is this, felt, so it doesn't slide all over the place. So you can sit the stand anywhere you want to all over your desk. So if you just prefer to use a stand, this is good too. But like I said, I love my microphone being on this arm so I can move it back and forth. Now, the last thing I would suggest you get for your podcast show is this here. Now, this is called a pop filter. Now, I know you've seen this pop filter on front of the microphone. It goes in front of your microphone just like this as you're talking. I don't use it, but it goes in front of your microphone just like that. 
Oh, I'm showing my blue screen. Sorry, guys. And, the, and what this does, it when you're talking and you and you um, use words that start with a P, and you know how sometimes when you're talking and you say something that starts with a P and your lips might pop, pop, pop. Well, this uh, pop filter here prevents that from going on the audio and stops you from popping your letters. So that's what this is for. So like I said, I have everything here at home. I could start my own podcast myself. But those are the things that you need. And like I said, you can order everything from Amazon. Total, everything total here, I would guess it, it might run you $250, $300. So like I said, you don't have to bake, break the bank buying equipment for your podcast show. Now, as far as audio and video is concerned, I don't use the audio and video because I'm not a podcaster, but I would suggest that you go to riverside.fm. That's R-I-V-E-R, -E like the river, uh, side.fm for quality audio and video. So that's what I would suggest as far as uh, your audio and video is concerned. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is having a marketing plan. And this is so important. Now, in a dream world, you know, we all think that we can get out there and start our podcast show and mi millions of listeners is going to come because we went out there and we started it. Well, I don't know if you've seen that movie, The Field of Dreams, where they said, if you build it, they will come. Well, they ain't coming because they don't know that you're not there. You have to market yourself. So marketing is very, very important. And that's the one thing out of everything I'm talking about that you really need to avoid. You need to market yourself because it takes a ton of effort to get anything started, your business, your podcast show, whatever you're doing. Um, it takes a ton of strategy and marketing in order for people to know that you're there. So having a marketing plan is crucial in order to grow your podcast show. Now, you need to start asking yourself some questions, and, and I'm going to read this. So if you see me looking down, I'm reading this verbatim because I can't memorize this. So you need to ask yourself, how are you going to get people to listen to your podcast show? Marketing. Where do the majority of your listeners hang out? And, you know, people ask you that question all the time. Well, where does your audience hang out? So what they're really saying to you is, does your audience hang out on social media? And if they do hang out on social media, what channels are they hanging out on? The next thing you want to ask yourself is, do you have marketing experience that you can leverage? For instance, do you know how to use Facebook ads to get your marketing out there? And what social media platforms are the most effective for you? Now, with those questions in mind, there are plenty of ways to market your show, including email marketing, paid ads, social media channels, and networking events, be they virtual or in person. Now, let me tell you something. <laughs> I did a five-day podcast challenge, and that challenge was earlier this year. It was either in March or April. Guys, I made so many mistakes. It was the first time I did it, and I'm just going to be honest. I made so many mistakes when it came to marketing my challenge. Yeah, you can look at people doing challenges all day long, but like I said, you just don't know all the work that it takes to put together a challenge. You have to build your um, headers, you know, to go out on your Facebook uh social media channels. You have to build email uh, headers. You have to put a sales page together. You have to market that sales page in order for people to sign up for your challenge. And also I went live on in my group. I have a, a Facebook group for speakers. I went live in my group one time, just one time. Guys, that's a mistake. You need to go live at least three times Two weeks before you start your challenge, I went live once. I um, also have an email list. I also sent that out to my email list that I was having a podcast challenge. I did it once. That's not enough. 
I also have a newsletter. I put out on my newsletter that I was having a, a five-day podcast challenge. I did it once. That's not enough, guys. That's not enough. You have to get out there and aggressively market, market, market. And you might think, oh, God, people don't want to see me come here three days a week talking about my podcast. People don't want me emailing them that I'm starting a podcast. People don't want me, you know, putting in my newsletter that I'm starting the podcast. Like I said earlier, if you build it, they're not coming. You have to market it and market it strongly. So I ran a Facebook ad for my five-day podcast challenge. Guess how many people signed up for my Facebook podcast challenge? I'm going to give you a minute. If you want to put it in the comments, tell me, how many people do you think actually signed up for my challenge? Well, I'm going to tell you, 12. Only 12 people showed up for my challenge. Well, I should say they signed up for my challenge. Only two people actually showed up for my challenge. And out of those two people, I gave away a $50 Amazon card at the end of the challenge. I was thankful for the two people who signed up for my challenge. But believe me, it taught me a lesson, a big lesson that I didn't market enough. You have to market aggressively, like I said, if you're going to start your podcast show. And if you have guests on your podcast show, one of the things they're going to ask you as a guest is, how big is your social media following? And the reason why they ask you that question is because you're going to market for them and you're going to market to your social media uh, following. And you let them know, you know, as being a guest on your podcast show, this is how I'm going to help you out. I'm going to market this challenge to my social media following. I have 12,000 people that follow me on social media, on Facebook. I have 1,000 people who follow me on Instagram, whatever social media channels you're on. They're going to want, they're going to, want to know how many people do you have, and you're going to market that out to them. You're going to mark it out to your email list that you're going to be on so-and-so's podcast show on November 30th. I'm just going to use that as an example. You're going to put that in your newsletter. You're going to put it out there. You're going to go live and let people know that you're going to be on so-and-so's podcast show on November 30th. Then when you're on the podcast show, they're going to send you either the video, if you're on video, or they're going to send you the um, audio if they just do audio podcast shows. You're going to mark it again. You're going to send that video or that audio out to your social media channels. You're going to send it out to your people on your email list. You're going to send that out to the people on in your newsletter and so on. So you, you get what I'm saying. It's all about marketing. So marketing is really, really something that you're going to have to strive and do aggressively. So let's recap those three things that I just talked about. Number one, I said you need to know your what and your why from the beginning before you even think about starting a podcast show. You don't need to spend a fortune on equipment, but you do need quality equipment. And I showed you, I demonstrated everything that you need to get started. And like I said, if I wanted to, I could start a podcast show myself and just go to Amazon and get everything. If I mean, you can go to Best Buy or you can go to Fry's or you can go to whatever appliance store that you have in your city, but Amazon is, is you can get everything at once right there. And you need to have a marketing plan. It is really crucial. And I stressed it very hard that you need a marketing plan because they're not coming if they don't know that you're out there. So don't forget to download your free gift. And if you need help getting on podcast shows, if you don't want to start a podcast show, but you always thought about wanting to be a guest on a podcast show, I can help you with that. Just, I have a link here in the live to my calendar. Sign up on my calendar and let's talk. So schedule a call with me if you want to get on a podcast show. 
So that's it for today, guys. So don't so don't forget next week, next Thursday, November the 17th, I have a guest speaker coming in. Her name is Lisa Reed. And Lisa is going to be talking about how to grow your business through speaking. So you don't want to miss that. So thanks for watching. My name is Deborah Northcutt. And this is the Sensational Speakers Lounge. See you next Thursday at the same time, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Bye for now.